Hello everyone. Thank you for checking out today's video. I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Let's get started. What's something that can't be explained? It must be experienced. Dream logic slash chronology. Sometimes you can't put into words what happened in your dream or how two things were true at the same time. But when you experience it, it makes perfect sense. I think the hardest part of dream logic is how in your dream head, at least in my dreams, I'll be in a situation with an entire backstory and set of memories and reasonings for why what's occurring already in my head. So the dream could start with me in a store, and that's how I would explain it, but in my dream head I know I'm there, because I need a gift for my sister, and she was attacked by a horse, so I can't get anything with horses on it, and the clerk is giving me weird looks, because she knows about the horse thing, but she loves horses, so I'm offending her, and she's going to go home, and tell her family that. If I tell anyone it'd be yeah I was in this store, and it was weird. Nostalgia. It's so much more than just missing the past, it's a very strange blend of sad and happy. I've never been able to describe it, until you've given me the idea. To elaborate, it might be a sadness due to missing, how happy you felt during you did whatever the nostalgic thing was. You know that you'll never get the experience back even if you tried, but just the thought of the nostalgic thing makes you happy enough to equalize that emptiness. And after you feel it, you think well something. That good could never happen again, except it might be happening right now. I feel like nostalgia is a great motivator to make great life choices and experiences. Whenever I reminisce, I think to myself, how can I ever make my life as good as it was in that moment? This allows me to try and open some boundaries, spend time doing things I love, give attention to things slash people I never really noticed, and the list goes on. It's the hope that you can indirectly live those great moments again that makes life more interesting. Hot you can't explain it to a child. They have to experience it to understand. I remember vividly age 4 my mom telling me the iron was hot. I also remember vividly pressing my hand to it. Lesson learned I told my 5 year old nephew to not touch the stove top even after the flame is gone because it's still hot. He didn't believe me, and touched it, as soon as my back was turned. He regretted it. I remember reading somewhere how we need these experiences, to keep ourselves safe in the future, and learn our limits. The article described how making playgrounds safer actually harmed this development of our children. It's been a long time, since I read it, and I'm sure I'm missing key details, but hopefully I've expressed the gist of it. The moment when you are playing an instrument and you aren't really making decisions on what you are playing. The music just flows out. I've had this, and it's actually a small problem. I play the saxophone, and whenever I have that instinctual playing, I have to try my best to not smile, since it could ruin my embouchure. OMG yes. I play the piano and sometimes I just randomly play these long beautiful pieces that just come out of my fingers. Then my mom's, like you should write that down, and I literally can't. Just record all your sessions. Worst case scenario, you delete it right after you finish. Best case you have a copy in case you want to revisit something. I'm going to say the realization of your own mortality. It's always an obscure concept, that always seems so far away, until in one terrifying moment it becomes a crystal clear fact of reality. I've been terrified and abundantly aware of death from an early age. I didn't have any early experiences with death, but I do remember not being able to sleep at night because I was afraid. Imagine a 3 year old screaming that they don't want to die every night before bedtime. My poor mum. Even now not much has changed, this intrusive thought pops into my head just as I'm about to fall asleep every night. I was the same way. Except I focus more on those around me. Like I can vividly recall being in the car with my mom right before leaving for school and I burst into tears and started screaming that I didn't want her to die because she was getting old. <laughs> color. I've always imagined how I'd explain colors to a person who was born blind. My so is color blind. And one day we were listening to the 311 song Amber, and he asked me what Amber looked like, and it was so interesting to try to explain. Or he'll ask what color something is, and I'll say something like sea foam green, 
and he'll just look at me and be like okay that's a fake color. You never realize how wide your color spectrum is until you're always with someone who doesn't share it. My so is color blind. He is really good at those hidden object game slash seeing someone in camo because he barely acknowledges the color and focuses on shapes instead. The pain of losing a loved one. I thought I understood what it would be like. We've all seen it in various media. I think we all have heard someone talk about losing someone close. I thought it would be a sharp pain. I thought it would be more finite and that my world would feel different. But it wasn't like that at all. It was this lake that hid in the background. Life still happened that day, an asshole still honked and flipped me off, and bills still had to be paid. Nothing changed and everything changed. I think that is what is hardest to try and explain. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder, lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe, briefly. Our eyes, briefly, see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory, suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls die, after a period peace blooms, slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses, restored, never to be the same, whisper to us. They existed. They existed. We can be. Be and be better. For they existed by Mayer and Jalau. Getting old. It just plain sucks and nothing can prepare you for it. Your body starts doing weird shit. Everything hurts. Your brain starts going, and you actually can recognize it, but damn it just is depressing. And it can come sooner than you think. When I got carpal tunnel and arthritis from yard work in my early 30s I felt that. And so it begins. I would phrase it slightly different. It's more like you don't prepare yourself for it. I just turned 60, and I'm like holy shit I'm old and getting older. 54 here and wondering wait, wasn't I 30 just the other day? I remember, years back, my dad telling me that he didn't feel old inside. He felt the same as he always had, it was just his body that was changing. That was when it really hit me that old people weren't some different class of humans, that they didn't have some affliction that I would never catch. When you fall for a terrible person and gloss over all of their flaws. Doesn't matter how hard your friends try to explain. Kinda similar, realizing you fell in love with a person who doesn't exist. Like a truly terrible person who purposely took on every imaginable quality you'd ever pictured in your soul but long enough to make you fall in love with them, only to reveal who they really were, after it was too late to go back. That moment of realization and that feeling is something I won't ever be able to put into words. I honestly don't know if there are words in existence that can convey the depth of the pain and disbelief. I hope on one who might read this ever has to understand what I mean. It's hard to explain an anxiety attack unless you've had one. My mother used to get them and I never understood what she was going through until I started having them later on in life. It's pretty easy to explain mine. Horror movie jump scare music that never climaxes, or has a jump scare it just keeps building, until you have to move on, but it's still following you, and you don't know what the jump scare is, because you're sitting in a well lit room with family. Yes. You also describe the movie it follows. <coughs> Drugs, hallucinating ones. LSD and MDMA. Both of those are pretty indescribable to someone who has never experienced them. Edit and things like DMT slash psilocybin slash peyote. LSD is just my personal favorite. I thought LSD would be close to a top comment, but damn boy it's all the way down here. I was scrolling and scrolling looking for it. Is it bad that I immediately thought drugs? <laughs> Scuba diving came here to say this. People think it is like swimming. It's more like floating in space while visiting another planet. Exactly. It's floating weightless. 
you get the same feeling when you get comfortable enough in free diving, but even a bit more liberating, because you're not wearing anything but that cozy second skin suit, the sort of zen-like state you need to be in, to do perform long enough breathe holds, and the way you feel, when you're just laying at the bottom, far enough away from the surface, that you can't really hear anything, and it's a bit dangerous because it gets a little too peaceful, and you can't stay there forever.